I was 20 years old. I had dropped out of college to model in Chicago, and it was great. I was making $1,000 a day. Oh, Cindy Crawford, I do not take pleasure in this. Come on, Cindy, I like you. I gotta do this, Cindy. Here we go. So, the first episode of The Supermodels on Apple TV Plus was released yesterday, and it has Cindy talking about her early days of modeling. It wasn't about, oh, wow, you're so pretty, we're gonna take pictures of you. No, it's like, your job is, you're helping me sell this jacket. Like, we're all here to sell this jacket. Yes, Cindy, that's the job of a model. You just wanna be paid for people to take your picture because you're pretty? No, like, they're advertising clothes, Cindy. That They have to advertise the clothes. Like, if you're hired by The Gap <laughs> for an ad to promote their jacket, you're gonna be wearing that jacket. <laughs> Gap isn't just gonna let you wear your own clothes in an ad for The Gap. When you walked in Todd Olam's fashion show for his Spring 1994 collection, it wouldn't have been a very effective promo for Todd Olam if you decide to wear Chanel walking down the runway. No, you have to wear Todd Olam. <laughs> you actually need this explained to you, Cindy? That's scary that you need this explained to you. But anyways, so, Cindy, well, we're even, we're getting to the good stuff here, here we go. So, in 1986, Cindy was on the Oprah Winfrey Show. Straight from DeKalb, Illinois, please welcome Cindy Crawford. Now, Cindy is claiming in that first episode of The Supermodels that she was objectified by Oprah, okay? Now, the Daily Mail claims that since the Supermodels episode premiered yesterday, Oprah has taken down that 1986 segment from her YouTube. I saw the Daily Mail headline. I thought I need to find this Oprah interview. I went to YouTube. It was right there, right on YouTube. So I have the actual Oprah Winfrey Show segment. Now, if Cindy Crawford or any of the producers of the Supermodels happen to see this segment, they're going right now, oh, shit. Yeah, so here's how the Oprah Winfrey Show segment plays out on the Supermodels. Did she always have this body? Stand up just a moment. Now this is what I call a bod. <laughs> Did she have to go to that training period or no? What was Cindy? So it appears as though Oprah gets Cindy to stand up, then immediately goes to John and asks him a question, and it appears as though Cindy's not asked anything or is able to speak at all for that entire segment on the Oprah Winfrey Show. Oh. She's been in Vogue, she's been in Elle, Harper's Bazaar, and was discovered here in Chicago, straight from DeKalb, Illinois, to New York, modeling. Please welcome Cindy Crawford. <laughs> So we have a full intro of Cindy, but yeah, Cindy didn't speak there, so let's keep going. From DeKalb to New York. That's a long journey. Yes. It is. So Oprah didn't immediately get Cindy to stand up, and she didn't immediately go to John to ask a question. No, she asks Cindy a question. Well, tell us what it's like for you now. Um, I live here mm -hmm. in Chicago because I prefer living here because I'm close to home. But I've been traveling quite a bit. Just I just got back from Mexico and Key West mm -hmm. on trips for bookings. Now, Cindy, you said on the supermodels... I was like the chattel. Of ...mental stability. Or a child, like, be seen and not heard. Just to be clear, we are hearing you on the Oprah Winfrey Show in 1986, Cindy. That we're hearing you right now. You're being heard. Now, it's fascinating television, Cindy, so let's keep watching. Um, it's great. I mean, I'm having fun, and I also was in school for part of the time, two years, while yeah. I was modeling. Now, Cindy, that was more of you being heard. Now, I bet if I said to 1986, Cindy, that was really boring television, you spoke in a really soft, monotone voice, and you weren't engaging at all, and you didn't say anything interesting? 1986 Cindy would probably say to me, well, I don't do this for a living. I don't speak on camera as part of my job. No, you don't, that's right, I do. And if I spoke like you, like you did in that 1986 clip, I wouldn't have this job. And no fashion designers <laughs> are coming and giving me money to put their clothes on. So yeah, I can't do your job, you can't do my job. Now let's get back to the standing up part. So first, I'm gonna show you how it played out on the Oprah Winfrey Show. Stand up just a moment, because no one saw you come in standing up. Now this is what I call a bod. <laughs> Take a listen and notice what the supermodels decided to edit out. Stand up just a moment. Now this is what I call a bod. <laughs> so they decided to edit out Oprah saying, because no one saw you come in, as in the audience. Kind of an inconsequential thing, but it, I can see why they took it out, because the skewed narrative that they're presenting, they don't want to include Oprah justifying why she asked her to do that. Now, let's go to the Oprah Winfrey show. Very good, very good. But I'm not, not, I don't weigh 100 pounds. I'll tell that lady on the phone that I do not weigh 100 pounds. You're what, are you about 5'9", 5'10"? 5'9", and I try to stay around 120. Here's how the supermodels showed that exchange. Oh wait, no, they didn't show it. <laughs> Did she have to go to that training period? They cut it all out to make it seem like Oprah just immediately went to John and asked him another question. Are you embarrassed yet, Cindy? Because I would be. When you look at it through today's eyes, when Oprah's like, stand up and show me your body, 
Like, show us why you're worthy of being here. Well, nobody said that, Cindy. And I guess we have to go back to the definition of a model. Fashion designers pay you money to put their clothes on your physical body. They have deemed you more worthy than 99.9% .9 of the bodies in the world to pay their money, to give their money to you to put their clothes on your body. She didn't ask you to stand, so then she could go around to audience members and say, hey, rate that body, is that a model body? No, she asked you to stand so, so the audience could see what the fashion industry has already deemed as worthy. The viewer of the ad or the person in the audience at the runway show is looking at your body to see the clothes. Now I need to go into all the disclaimers <laughs> that I know the different ways my words could be skewed or twisted into what I didn't say. So I wrote as many of them as I could think of down and I'm gonna have to read these off. There's no way I can remember all these. But yeah, I'm not saying Cindy doesn't have ownership over her body. When a fashion designer pays her money to wear their clothes, they don't take control of Cindy's body. They don't have a say over Cindy's body. I'm not saying Cindy is only a body. I'm not saying Cindy's voice doesn't matter. I'm not saying in life, Cindy Crawford should be seen and not heard. Of course not. When Cindy is at a photo shoot, she wants to voice concern. She should be listened to by her boss, her coworkers, the photographer. Yes, she deserves to be heard and respected and treated fairly and work under fair conditions. I'm talking about the actual act of modeling. If you're hired to be a print model, you're seen and not heard. It's literally impossible to be heard through a print ad. There's no audio. If you're in a runway show, I mean, you could talk your way down the runway. You could, that doesn't really interfere with things. You could ask people while you're walking down, how's your day and tell them about your day. You could give that a shot, fine. But no, it's not part of the job description. Your part of the job description is to put clothes on your body and walk down the runway. That's the job, Cindy. Sorry, like if you don't like the job, then don't do it. But like, you've done it, you've done a great job at it. But to turn around and be like, Oh, I'm asked to be seen and not heard. Well, yeah, you're a print model, Cindy. You don't, you can't hear you. <laughs> Anyways, this is like, this is mind numbing, this kind of stuff. It's like, really, Cindy Crawford? I gotta explain this to you? But yeah, what are your thoughts on, yeah, Cindy's uh, wanting to be heard in a print ad and this whole manipulation of that Oprah Winfrey segment, which is pretty despicable. In the moment, I didn't recognize it. Only when I looked back at it and I was like, oh my gosh, that was so not okay, really. Especially from Oprah.